Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the chair of the Arts and Culture Commission is Pat Salmon. She's in attendance today via telephone. She has requested someone with video access to the meeting serve as the chair today. Um, I'll open up nominations now as the chair of today's meeting. And Barbara, I think you might want to self-nominate yourself. Okay, I'm willing to do it if, any, if no one else does. That's fine, I'm happy to serve. I, I meant to nominate, I didn't uh, unmute, but I nominate Barbara. I second. Okay. Thank you so much. So we heard uh, Jared nominate Barbara and Frank second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Wonderful. Thank you, Barbara, for serving in this capacity. It, um, at, this, at this time, we'll let Barbara call the meeting to order. Thank you. It's good to see everyone, at least in this way. I wish it was in person. I'm glad to see you're all well and healthy. Um, I'll call this April 14th, 2020 meeting of the Urbana Arts and Culture Commission to order. May we have a roll call, please? Okay. Ms. Bex? I'm here. Ms. Hedlund? Present. Miller? I'm here. Mr. Modica? Here. Ms. Orcherton? Here. Mr. Panilla? Here. Ms. Salmon? Here. And Ms. Williams? Here. Okay, we're all here. Great, looks like we have a quorum. Next, we'll follow the approval of minutes from the March 10th, 2020 meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? We have it. The minutes of the March 10th, 2020 meeting are now approved. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda today? I have two, actually. Um, the first is that our presenter, Lisa Fay, is going to present her 2019 final grant report um, ahead of my staff report in the meeting agenda. So that's just going to be a slight jump to earlier in the agenda. Um, the second is there's just some, um, some more information we want to share today and state publicly about tonight's meeting. Um, so I want to just say first and foremost that this is the Urbana Arts and Culture Commission meeting. It's going to be conducted 100% virtually due to the governor's shelter in place order and executive order number five, the provisions of the Opens Meeting Act 5 ILCS 120. In addition, section four of the city of Urbana temporary emergency ordinance to address COVID-19 pandemic provides for meetings to be conducted electronically. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the city's website. Please note that the chat function for this session has been disabled and all public will be muted. Mute, pu excuse me, public input can be provided during the public input part of our agenda. If you wish to speak during um, this time, please use the button at the bottom right corner of your screen titled raise hand to be called upon. Um, this function is located in the participant window. State your first and last name for the record. If you are phoning in and would like to speak, please use number nine to raise your hand. And that's actually an asterisk in the number nine to raise your hand. For each agenda item after the staff have presented or offered an update, the Arts and Culture Commission members will have an opportunity to ask questions um, by raising your hand to be called upon. Um, so hopefully you can all find that raise hand function. This function is located at um, the participant window at the bottom right corner of your screen. Hope that explains a little bit about how we'll be conducting the meeting today. And um, between that and the other item I listed, those are the only changes to our agenda. Great, thank you, Rachel. Rachel. Um, your members have any questions, please? We're good to go? Great. So uh, would you like to present our, our first presenter, Rachel? introduce her i would love to introduce our first presenter so this is lisa fay and she's presenting on the 2019 urbana arts grant presentation called experimental theater performance laboratory for young theater practitioners we'll hand it off to you lisa 
Thank you, Rachel. Um, and hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, so this happened quite a while ago, um, last summer, which seems so long ago. Um, I have some slides I'm going to um, share with you um, if I can get it to work. And Rachel's really good at this, so she can, if everything messes up, she'll help me get through it. Um, but we had the opportunity to um, continue work at Craner Center for the Performing Arts and in the community. Um, we're long-term artists in Champaign-Urbana. And so this was really an opportunity for us to bring those two um, bits of our work together. We've been in residence at Craner um, as guest artists for a, a long time now. And, um, and we wanted to bring um, the area youth into Craner um, not just as um, cultural consumers, but as cultural producers. So I'll um, take you through some of those slides. Um, but early on in the project, we met with um, Cranert Center um, engagement folks, and they helped us to set up um, really permission slips and all those kinds of things and outreach to all the area high schools. Um, and then early on, we also reached out to um, Kevin Tajay, who some of you may know, he's an actor in the community. And we brought him aboard um, because this coming year, Kevin's going to be working more closely with Cranard and with area youth, and also has started a um, project um, that's the August Wilson monologue project. So we, we felt like it would be a really nice um, collaboration and, and it was delightful. Um, you'll see some of Kevin's pictures in here and you'll, you'll see why I say that. Um, I'm going to try to share the screen. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, here we go. Are you able to see that? Yeah. Um, I can't see you. So you yes. You have to say yes or no. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We're here. We can see it. Mm. Um, I can't hear you, so let's see, can you, uh, yeah, I really can't tell what's happening. Um, I'm going to try again, and I can't hear whether or not you can see the screen, so, and I, now I've lost you, so let's see. Uh-oh. Can you hear me, Lisa? Let's see. Um, Rachel? Yes. Can you hear Rachel, me? Rachel, can you tell me, can you unmute yourself and tell me if you can see this? I am unmuted. Is there other people hearing me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, yes. she's, hear you. Lost, <laughs> she's lost her ability to hear then. Let me, um, let me see. She, she, she must have muted the meeting. Yeah. Um, I'm going to send her a quick email while we're, while we're working on this and see if she might see it. Lisa, we could hear you, but uh, you couldn't hear us, but we could hear you and see your presentation if you can hear us now. Okay, I sent her an email. Maybe that'll help. Um, it looked does it look like she dropped off? She might have hung up, so maybe she's calling back. <laughs> I think she just disconnected because she was having the technical issue. Yeah. Well, if you guys don't mind, let's give it a couple minutes just to see if she can get back on. 
um, and then we'll continue with the meeting and go on to the next um, presenter, if not. You're back, Lisa. Um, Jason? I really can't hear anyone right. or see anyone, so I'm not sure. Lisa, we are hearing you and seeing you. You're good. Lisa, Oop. unmute yourself. <laughs> I, um, Jason, I keep unmuting Lisa. Is there some sort of override going on? Okay, but um, so I'm gonna try to share one more, time, but I can't. Ooh, her connection must be bad. Yeah, it could be. Lisa, are you able to hear me? Seems like maybe not. Um, um, just barely, you know? Maybe there's a bad connection, it could be. The connection's bad. Um, I wonder if we could suggest something in, in light of this uh, for Lisa. Um, perhaps, Lisa, if you're willing to um, send us a little bit about your, um, maybe a little bit about what you were going to emphasize in this particular presentation. Um, we already have your final written report. If we can't get it to come back, because I know you also have a limitation on your time today. Um, so do you... <laughs> Do you want me to, let's see, let's see. Um, do you want Is me to show, send you the slideshow that I had? Um, I yeah, know. that's fine. If you want me to pass along the slideshow uh, and, since, and since we can hear you right now, maybe you could just say a little bit about how it went. Okay, can oh. you see this? Yeah. <laughs> yes, can we can see, see it this. perfectly. Yeah. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When I start to do this, I can't hear you and you can't hear me. Oh, we can so hear you. Stop the share. Um, Lisa. So I'll send that. I, oh, I can't Lisa? hear you. You're all frozen. Um, oh. One thing I do know is that we've been, when we've been doing um, presentations, we actually ask everyone to turn off the video because the, the connections are very unstable, like within the mm. university setting. So I don't know if that would help. Oh. but. Um, I'm, I'll just talk for a few minutes. Um, I was going to show you the slideshow. We invited Kevin Tajay. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, and he worked with us. He works with Urbana Youth. And so we wanted to um, draw in this uh, really nice grouping of students. There were about um, 20 students all together. Um, and then we also did a tour of Craner Center with Sam Smith. Um, and there's photos of that in there. And then we had a final um, presentation um, where the youth invited the community to um, to see what they had done. I'm really sad that I can't show you the slides. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess I'll just say goodbye. Lisa, I have can, no idea if you can hear me or not. Can you hear um, me now? Okay. Are you able uh, to hear so me? That's it. And if you have oh. questions, I guess go ahead and email me questions. I'm going to go ahead and leave the meeting now. All right. <laughs> Barbara, unmute yourself and you can call the next part of the agenda. 
That's a shame. That maybe maybe next time or maybe she can upload them to YouTube and we can all look at them that way or she can send us a link to her Google Drive and it'll it'll get it'll get worked out. I'll prompt her to send the um the slides to me through email and I'll pass them along to all of you. That'd be great. Thank you. So we're going to stay in the presentation mode then. Is that right? Or do you want to give your staff report at this time? I'd like to do that next, yes. Well, please welcome everyone, Rachel Storm, presenting the monthly staff report. Thank you. Thank you guys to, for having so much patience with today's meeting. I know we're all getting used to this strange time for everybody and also just working with technology. And I know that probably a lot of us have been on Zoom all week or different other kinds of, you know, virtual meeting uh, platforms, but I'm just really grateful that um, we're able to meet together in this way because it's really nice to see all your faces and for those of you who are listening by phone and um, who are waiting to give your grant presentations. Thank you so much for joining us. This will be a pretty brief staff report. I'm going to um, share my screen and if I have similar troubles with Lisa, I'll come back and I won't use the PowerPoint. Are you able to see my screen? Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Wonderful, thank you everyone. Okay, so this is your April 2020 staff report. Um, like I said, it'll be a little bit more brief um, than normal. First and foremost, of course, I wanna talk about the COVID-19 impact um, on our programs. Uh, the Urbana Arts and Culture Program has suspended all in-person events and programs in response to COVID-19, um, the crisis through May. Um, staff are closely monitoring the situation and consulting public health uh, guidance. Some events are being held virtually and the Urbana Arts and Culture staff are working to share relief program information, resources for local artists, and continue various initiatives virtually where we are able. Right now, the arts and culture staff, um, particularly myself, the arts and culture coordinator and our program specialist, Heather Ann, who's on our call today, um, we're both working from home. Um, you can, of course, reach us normally through those channels and we are able to get all of our uh, voicemails and other phone calls as well. Um, I wanna mention that on March 20th, the city of Urbana offices were closed to the public. Essential services are still very much in operation and the city staff who are able to are working from home during this stay at home order. Our executive internship student, Emily Crane, um, who came to us from Urbana High School, um, ended her internship early due to the COVID-19 crisis. Um, her internship evaluation was completed and submitted for Urbana High School. Um, I wanna just give her a shout out and some praise because it was just absolutely wonderful to be able to take on a student through this um, program through the, through the Ur Urbana High School. And um, I hope that she'll be involved in the arts um, coming forward as well. So we had our sneak peek um, right before we all kind of went <laughs> to stay indoors. Um, I'm very proud to say that everyone also complied that evening with elbow bumps and not touching our faces. <laughs> and in general, just did a really good job. Um, we were able to go early to the, um, the building, make sure everything was really well sanitized and sanitized before we leave. Um, so it was, it was wonderful in that respect, of course, with this impending crisis, but it also was just a wonderful event on its own. So I want to first and foremost say that we're really excited with how things are going with the arts grant program. We've been able to communicate to all the grantees a little bit about um, what resources are available to artists, what our expectations are at this time, um, understanding, of course, that uh, we're really wanting to support artists as much as possible in completing their grant requirements. Um, being able to grant things like extensions, um, work with people if they want to put on virtual events or do their um, arts grant in a different kind of form, depending. Um, so we're, we've been able to be a bit flexible with that. And that's not really unusual for us. We've always been fairly flexible. We just need to make sure that um, folks get approval on anything budgetary or programmatic that changes in a grant proposal. Um, and that is through um, the arts and culture coordinator. So we do spend, um, spend some significant time making sure we relay that information information artists again, even though they do, of course, get it at their orientation. Um, but the sneak peek event itself was quite lovely. Here's some photos from the event that evening um, out at Riggs Beer Company. We had over 60 people attend and we had musical performances by the Data Waves. Um, here's some of our grantees. The photo was taken our, after a couple of people had already left. So it doesn't um, capture everybody, but this is a number of our grantees this year and just a wonderful group. 
Um, the data waves were just wonderful as well. And so great shout out to them for being our um, musical feature that evening. And then um, also wanted to express my thanks to Jeff Putney, who took a bunch of photos for our event. They're all pretty forthcoming. So we'll be adding those to our website and our social media pages soon. So you'll see those pop up from the, from the event that evening. We've been doing features of each of our grantees on social media. It's customary for us. But of course, during this time of, of isolation, it's been really wonderful to see all the different grantees be featured on our social media pages. Um, now I'm going to talk about Boneyard Arts Festival. If you've been following along, you've probably noticed that Boneyard Arts Festival had gone virtual. Um, so it has still, um, the planning team is looking to do a postponed date. So doing a, a full festival a little bit later. But at least for now, there's been a virtual Boneyard Arts Festival going on. Um, quite a big social media campaign highlighting different artists. Um, there's been things like this um, virtual Boneyard uh, Facebook um, profile border that you can add. Um, and this is just an example of some of the artist features that have ha been happening. This is one that features Don Link. Um, but the Boneyard Festival page website has also been turned into kind of an archive of lots of different artists and a feature page where you, that links, of course, to their websites where you can buy art directly. So that's really nice too. Um, we're really uh, hoping to make sure that we, all of these events are able to kind of continue on and forward. And these are some of the ways in the interim that, that we're still kind of keeping the, um, the hype going about all that our art scene has to offer. So in connection with Boneyard, we had plans to do Culture Fest. And right now that has been postponed. Um, the hope is that we will reschedule this event at a later date, perhaps still in conjunction with the rescheduled Boneyard Arts Festival. Women Who Painted is uh, still on display at the Library and City Building, although none of, neither building is open to the public at this time. One thing, though, that I do want to highlight is that we're hoping to um, really promote that this, uh, this exhibit also has its own online archive created by the artist. It's available at womenwhopainted.com, and it's absolutely wonderful. It has both all of the digital and oil paintings featuring different women painters, and it also has um, their stories and their histories captured. So it's a really wonderful historical archive of women painters and I'm wanting to promote that in conjunction with Virtual Boneyard Arts Festival as well. The Art of Jazz exhibit that we'd planned for Boneyard Arts Festival is postponed. Um, we are not planning any further exhibits until COVID-19 no longer poses significant risk, um, but we do intend to reschedule these events for later, for later times. I um, want to also mention that we have had some virtual um, collaborations happen through partnerships in collaboration with Shambana Moms, Coop Adventure Play, and the Museum of the Grand Prairie. We've helped spearhead virtual events designed to keep the community feeling together during times of separation. One of these is the Chalk Your Walk, uh, which is a weekly um, Friday event um, day long where we encourage families to chalk outside on their sidewalks and then there's the intention that people will go around and see other people's sidewalk chalk art. What's been really cool is if you follow things like Facebook, social media, you can find the event page for this and everyone has been uploading what, they po what they've been chalking. So you can see dozens of photos of what people have been creating here in Urbana and it's really quite beautiful. We also were featured on WCIA, um, on CI Living, about this particular event. Um, and it was another uh, opportunity for us to talk about the arts program and the value of arts at a time like this. We also did something called Hearts for Healthcare, um, which was on National um, Healthcare Worker Day. And that was on March 30th, where we encouraged people to design hearts and display them and then share those displays Similarly, if you go to the event page, you can find a lot of information, and we also did get media coverage for this event. The one that's ongoing this entire month is Haiku from Home, which is a virtual poetry write and share. And so similarly, people are encouraged to post um, poems or pictures of where they've kind of displayed their poem in the event page. This is also co-sponsored by our Poet Laureate and CU Poetry Group. So this is a really nice one because it's also in honor of National Poetry Month. I want to say that our Poet Laureate Will Rieger, of course, has been facing some disappointments because a lot of the things that he had upcoming are, have been sort of temporarily canceled or postponed. Um, his tenure is technically up in June. Um, I've made the recommendation that I don't intend to change who our Poet Laureate is until we are through this crisis. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, and because he was also 
had a few initiatives that weren't able to happen because of this crisis, I think that we're in no rush to immediately um, find an, a new poet laureate in the midst of all of this going on. So for the moment, he remains to be our poet laureate and potentially past June. Um, but of course, we'll have a, a broad, deeper conversation about that at next month's meeting. Um, he's had to cancel a number of in-person events or appearances due the, to the COVID-19 crisis, um, but we are able to do a number of uh, virtual uh, initiatives. One thing that we're thinking is the Poets on a Park Bench initiative might be something that we can kind of switch up and do more virtually, maybe a park bench on a green screen situation <laughs> or something like that, or, you know, poets from home. Um, but something that uh, would still allow us to do that UPTV collaboration. The Postcard Poetry Project is going to be one that's actually quite easy for us to turn into a digital archive or digital um, exhibition. So that I think will continue. Poems on Glass is continuing. And so we will be working to install these poems that are selected. And we're almost done with selection. We're just have one mural that didn't have enough submissions, so we reopened just a little bit for um, some other people to submit to that. And then again, Haiku from Home is another thing that he's also co-sponsoring. Um, I wanna mention too, oh, and here's some of the slides that go with those, sorry. Um, I wanna mention, of course, that our, um, you may have heard Urbana's Market at the Square um, had a forced cancellation. Um, this is the indoor farmer's market, unfortunately. Um, the farmer's market had to end their season early, and this is the indoor farmer's market. Um, but in correspondence with that, of course, all of the um, farmer's market concerts have been canceled for the foreseeable future. That includes the outdoor farmer's market. We're hoping that the outdoors farmer's market will be able to go on, um, but we will like, not be having any events or things like that. Um, so our, our market uh, concerts and art workshops are not likely to be um, continuing until we reannounce and re that we're reopening them. The Young Artist Studio Series 2 is postponed until further notice. Um, we are exploring the possibility of a couple virtual versions of these um, as art lessons from local artists. Murals on Glass, again, is going to continue. This is just simply an installation. We may not do a ribbon cutting till a later date, but we will be working to install both um, this piece in the sunshine by Black Mao um, that will be installed in the Cunningham Township's front windows, as well as our utility box program working kind of to move forward in little ways on that too. Um, nothing that I'm going to announce right at this moment, but potentially at next month's meeting, there'll be more information. And lastly, I just wanna mention a couple of the things that have emerged um, in, in the wake of COVID-19 um, related to relief for individual artists and arts and cultural organizations. I've worked um, very hard to be in close communication with the local arts and culture community to promote various relief programs and upcoming grant deadlines. Um, some of these have already passed, but these have included things like the Three Arts Illinois Individual Artist Relief, um, the Foundation for Contemporary Arts Emergency Grants, the Illinois Humanities COVID-19 Emergency Relief Grants, the Three Arts Application for Arts and Cultural Organizations, and additional resource listings such as the Creative Capital Resource Listing for Artists. Um, we've also notified artists about opportunities through Illinois Arts Council program grants. There have been a number of wonderful webinars on a weekly basis through the National Endowment of the Arts, Illinois Arts Council, and the Arts Alliance. Um, if you or anyone you know is interested in learning more about artist resources, we um, have a short listing on our website. I have a very simple email I can send out with some additional listings as they emerge. We're trying to also add that to the city's website. Um, the city's website is um, urbanaillinois.us backslash COVID-19 COVID-19 backslash business dash resources. And that lists all of these um, programs that we're finding. Um, you may have also heard that many of these uh, relief programs are already kind of drying up or have had to kind of stop and um, announce that they'll be um, accepting applications later on. So I know like Artist Relief, for example, had to recalibrate their website. They got a huge onslaught of applications. Um, and so they also have uh, worked right now to um, kind of state that they're taking a pause and they'll reopen in May. Um, but any opportunity to, to find more resources for artists, we're trying our best to share those out. And um, if any of our commissioners or the public see things that they would wanna make sure to get out to local artists, I definitely encourage them to email um, the arts coordinator myself at rlstorm 
at urbanaillinois.us and send me any information you're seeing. I'll be sure to post it as much as I can. Uh, we also saw that the Illinois Arts Council recently announced a coalition of national grant makers. This is consisting of the Academy of American Poets, Artadia, Creative Capital, Foundation for Contemporary Arts, MAP Fund, National Young Arts Foundation, and the United States Artists launched Artist Relief. And this is artistrelief.org, the one I was just mentioning. They're giving out unrestricted $5,000 grants and other immediate resources for artists. Again, um, they'll reopen that application in May. And so that's an important thing to keep an eye on. And then we also are asking that if artists are able to, to fill out the COVID-19 impact survey for artists and creative workers. This is also on artistrelief.org. Um, this is a national um, call for responses to a survey about the impact of COVID-19 on the creative community. Um, so we encourage everyone who is able to fill out that survey so we can get a good national picture of what's going on. Um, again, the city of Urbana assembled this listing of COVID-19 resources at the link I gave. Um, I'm happy to pass this along and you can find all this information at my staff report on the city's um, page under the, uh, the, this meeting information for today, April 14th meeting. And that's all I have today. Wow, thank you very much, Rachel. Have you slept? I, I have slept. One other thing that isn't in this report, but it might be good to know is that we also got our own application in for the program grant from Illinois Arts Council. Um, the arts and culture program has received this program grant a number of years and it's, it's really wonderful support for the program. So we're hopeful that we'll also get that, that, that grant, of course, again this year. Super. Great. Thank you so much. Um, this at this moment in the meeting, it brings us back to grant presentations then. Uh, the next presenter will be Emily Knox of Makerspace Urbana. Emily will be presenting on the 2019 Heartland Maker Fest. Hi, I'll go ahead and share my, oh, can I share my screen? I think I stopped sharing, so you should be able to share now. It's disabled, so you'll need to make me a co host. Okay. Is it working now? Uh huh. Okay. So I'm here to present on the Heartland Maker Fest, um, which we are lucky enough to have the Public Arts Commission support. Oh my gosh, I guess every year we've had it. We were originally the Mini Maker Fair and we uh, rebranded as the Heartland Maker Fest, I guess about three years ago. So the Heartland Maker Fest was held on, sorry. Saturday, October 5th. Um, we had about 1,600 attendees and we had 23 makers from Central Illinois. Uh, we have 15 volunteers, but really there's a core committee of people who work on the Heartland Maker Fest. Um, and we meet, since we've been doing this so much, we actually have to meet uh, fewer times than we used to, but um, we meet about once a week heading about a month before the Maker Fest and about once a month or so um, in the six months prior to the Maker Fest. So here you can see the list of makers that we have. One thing we really like try to have is not just have um, people who necessarily think of themselves as makers. I guess that's the best way to think about it. We have people who uh, do things at home and we like to highlight our community members and just say come out and show what you do so you can see all of the different um, people who are involved it's always our goal to get um, more makers um, whenever we have the fest we had a few we had fewer this year but i think it was a really wide variety of makers at in 2019 um, <clears throat> We had several people who were new, which is always wonderful to have. Uh, so what the Urbana uh, Arts Grant really enables us to do is to rent the space. Uh, Lincoln Square Mall charges us $1,000 more or less for everything. So that's including the stage if we use it, uh, set up and tear down, 
um, all of the tables um, and the chairs. And it means that our event can be free. A lot of maker fairs um, charge and it's really important for us not to charge, um, but that it's a free event. Um, we could even encourage our makers not to charge anything for their work unless they want to, but it's not a requirement um, for being a part of the fest. So here are all of our sponsors. We actually had two new sponsors, I believe. So the Center for Innovation and Teaching and Learning was a new sponsor. And we had one sponsor come back, CU Adventures in Time and Space. Here's just some pictures. Um, I don't think we had any pictures from when it was like the critical mass of people. So we start at nine. I'd say the middle critical mass comes out at about 11 or so. We serve lunch to, actually serve both breakfast and lunch to the makers, um, which makes a big difference. They don't have to run out and find um, food to eat. Uh, we sometimes have performers, um, and uh, you can just see some of the different things that uh, were going on then. This is Trash and Fashion. We love having the fashion show every year, if possible. Uh, origami. Um, Shudong out comes every year and makes things. <laughs> um, this is just a hobby for him. Uh, and he always does something incredible during the fest. Uh, I think this is CIA, um, which is aeronautics. They always come every year. Um, this is AIGA. This is, uh, I think, the architecture group at uh, UIUC. They were a new maker this year. So that's really my presentation. Uh, the committee has decided to postpone the MakerFest for this year. So we forgot to apply for a grant. That was all of our faults. Uh, I just completely forgot about the deadline. Um, so we will probably be applying this coming year to hopefully have something maybe in the spring. But um, we are not going to have the fest this fall. I just don't think that we have the bandwidth to be able to do it. Um, we could put something together, but um, it'd it just be a lot to try to do it this fall. So probably in the spring, if not in the spring, then it'll be in fall 2021. So I'm happy to answer any questions um, you might have about the fest. Anyone? Any questions? I just wanted to say um, that I've been, I've been able to be out at MakerFest and I really try my, my best to be at a number of our grantees events just to see how they're going and of course support them and I think you all have always do such a tremendous job and that this is one of the projects that excites me in part because it does that work of transforming STEM into STEAM and mm -hmm. it's, it's just really wonderful to see. Um, I, of course, was surprised to not get an application from this pile, but in totally your defense, <laughs> not only did we kind of adjust the deadlines and we tried to get information, of course, about that out early, but the other thing is that if you're going to take a chrysalis year, this is probably the year to yes. do it. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> as it turns out, not yeah. the worst position to be in. Uh, yeah, congratulations definitely. for all the work you've done so far. Okay. Well, thank you. Good to see you. Any other uh, questions? Is there any other question or impact and comments from the commission before we move on? I'm just curious, what kind of response did you have from the people that were participating in the festival? We always have wonderful responses. Um, I know there are a lot of people in the community who look forward to it every year. Um, we've been asked to do it more than once, but that's a little bit too much for us. Um, so it's always, um, I, I, we started doing billboards and that has made a big difference for getting um, people from across the communities to come. Um, we weren't able to do billboards this year. Apparently uh, Adams only does five nonprofit billboards per month. They have some weird formula that they use. So we will start that a lot earlier, but we always get very good response. Okay. 
Any other comments or questions? If there aren't any other comments or questions, just a note to presenters, once you've presented, don't feel obligated to stay. Same goes for our in-person meetings. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Emily. Thanks. Bye-bye. Good to see you. Well, our next presenter is also another Emily, Emily McCallum, who will be presenting on It's My Body. Welcome, Emily. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thanks for Hi, having me. Hi, Emily. Hi, Rachel. I, uh, yeah, I, yeah, thanks for having me. I've been, I'm, I feel well accustomed to Zoom meetings at this point, so hopefully I can share my screen and it'll all work out. Um, but just to, I, want, I wanted to start out with a little bit of background on how I came up with the idea for the project and also to say thank you to Rachel for all your support and that presentation you just did is just, you've got so much on your plate and I feel so supported by you and, and the program and this is my first grant uh, ever and uh, so it was, it was just a thrill. Uh, this is my second year living in the city of Urbana, and um, I just saw I was attracted to this place because of its arts, and um, and it's and it's just really been a big uh, time of growth for me. So, um, so it's called "It's My Body." It's a song. I'm a, a musician. Of I've been recording and performing for my whole life, but doing it professionally for the last ten years. And I came up with the, the song, I wrote the song um, in kind of response to my own struggles uh, as a woman uh, in terms of getting the respect for my body and self-expression uh, and wanting to put that out publicly, mostly to empower other women and girls and non-cis um, people. So uh when i i also wanted to give you some context in that when i i moved to urbana i saw it as like i said a thriving art scene and i also saw it as a more diverse place than um where i was living before in washington state and so i i really wanted to to try and desegregate my life um as a musician and just as a person and an activist. Uh, and so with this Urbana Arts Grant, I noticed as I was performing as a folk and kind of country singer in town that these subgenres uh, and these scenes in Urbana art, Ur Urbana music are segregated as well as any number of things in our daily life. And I wanted to try and use my resources um, to try and uh, kind of undo the inequality that I, I saw. Um, and so I want also to represent the hip hop uh, kind of aesthetic well. Um, the song that I wrote was a hip hop song and there's any number of complications of white people um, performing hip hop music. So I wanted to offer it to uh, hip hop artists uh, who are, you know, live and breathe in that scene and try and uh, offer whatever work and resources I could to hopefully we can collaborate and lift each other up. And, uh, and so the recruitment process for this to find collaborators in a, in a respectful and authentic way was more challenging than I thought it might be. Um, but with the help of Rachel and the city, the um, uh, open scene, open mic event that um, I hosted was a great way to kind of meet the greater um, arts world. And let me share my scene, my screen now to show you the pictures. I, I'll just talk over this for a minute. Here we go. Um, can you see it? Great. Um, so the open scene open mic was an awesome um and, and you know this happens uh all throughout the summer uh but this was uh me trying to find more 
performers, artists, musicians, singers that uh, felt similarly about this issue of body empowerment and getting respect for your body and self-expression. And through that, I met um, Janelle Davenport Pleasure and she's uh, she ended up being one of the singers for, um, for the recording of the song. Uh, but, the, but to go on, this was an awesome launching point. And then it took many more months to try and assemble the recording crew. Uh, things like Soul on Sunday and the university's hip hop collective connected me with other recording artists. And um, I'll show you another, um, another kind of picture of the recording studio. Little collage that I made, here we go. Um, doo -doo -doo. Here we go. So yeah, here we have Janelle and Day and myself in the studio and, and Larry with his back to us. And he is a kind of stalwart of the Urbana hip hop scene. And he was, he was super gracious and, and respectful and, and empowering to a lot of us who um, were, were newer to kind of a more professional standard. And um, he was super aligned with my values of trying to just, um, you know, lift everybody up. So uh, that, that I think really does it. We, we had plan it, planned on, um, on having a showcase of kind of all of our work this month, but due to COVID-19, we're not doing it. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm, I'm planning on kind of doing a social media blast this week to, um, lift up the, one of the lead singers, um, and her work because she, she's young and she's been making hip hop music. She grew up in Urbana. Keith Edwards Perry is her name. And, um, and I'm, I'm really excited about lifting up her her and her music she's super talented um and and she really loved working with larry so as much as i can kind of use this platform as as one to try and build some scaffolding for her to get a little more recognition i'm really excited about that and our, our growing friendship and collaboration i think that's it if there's any questions there is a question from um commissioner jared miller Okay. Emily, are you going to put any of this on like Bandcamp or anything? Yeah, that's the plan. Is Saturday okay. was the, was the initial um, the initial plan for uh, a kind of yeah a release event, a showcase. Um, so instead, I'll be putting some videos on my Facebook page. Um, you can just find me there, Emily McCown, on Facebook. And, um, and then from there, all the links of where to stream it and where to find it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just a recommendation. If you can, you know, tag us on anything that you put on social media. And I'm also happy to share through the arts and culture page, all of those things, um, whether it's, you know, audio or any video or anything that's been produced photos and stuff from the events like and the recordings we love sharing those stories about what our grantees are up to so sure. any opportunity you have to tag us that'll prompt me also to reshare anywhere I can great thank you um I also remember one last thing that I included in my report that I would love to share with you is that kind of through the networking process I got connected with the university um and and they they uh, hired me for this grant uh, for Kenwood Elementary School uh, fifth grade music class to teach social justice songwriting. And, mm -hmm. um, and so we rewrote this song together um, last month. And I might, I have it pulled up on my phone and it's just 20 seconds. So I might try and see if you can hear it, but it's just darn cute. The kids singing this song. I think we can all do it. Okay. Yeah, we can always expand it the other way too. Here it's coming. All right, ready? 
Sing out loud. Okay, here we go. It's my body. I can dance all day. It's my body. Let me say what I want. Say it's my body. Let me wear what I want. It's my body. Let me do what I want. So, all right, that's it. Thank you. Any more questions? Awesome. Otherwise, follow up on, on Saturday. There's a question from... Uh, oh, yeah. No Is other there? questions, but that that's uh, awesome, Emily. I can't wait to hear everything you guys made. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be sure to tag the city. Thanks for your support. You Thank bet. you, Emily. Thank you so much. It's wonderful working with kids at that age, isn't it? Yeah. So fun. <laughs> Are there any other comments before we move on? Great, thank you all. Um, our next presenter, <clears throat> uh, let's see, where, where are we? Justin, is it Macadara? It's Macadara. Thank you, I'm so sorry. Macadara of the CU Jazz Festival will make a presentation. Welcome. Thank you very much, I really appreciate it. Yes, uh, as just said, or whatever, my name is Justin Macadera. I am the uh, executive director and the founder for Music Defying Boundaries, which is an organization, a larger organization, which I'll talk about in just a second here. And, uh, and we're gonna talk about uh, our kind of premier event that we have, which is our CU Jazz Festival. Each year, this jazz festival just keep, continues to grow and grow and grow. And we're so excited about um, our continued growth and what's what's going to be happening. So let me kind of throw this, uh, see if I can get this uh, presentation to get on here. Share that. Okay. Yeah, let me get this up here for me. Okay, can everybody see this then? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. Yes. So again, Music Defying Boundaries is the larger, it's, it's a larger umbrella over a number of different things that we do within the community, uh, including working with radio and podcasting um, to kind of invite the community to come in and, and speak on improvised music and maybe some odd types of music and that type of thing. I also have a group called Stream of Consciousness, which does a lot of uh, live performances. We actually performed at this last uh, jazz festival, uh, actually working with the Poet Laureate, Will Rieger, and, and doing some collaboration with them. I'll talk about that in just a second. But again, our premier event that we do is the CU Jazz Festival. It is a huge event now, um, and it started, you know, very small and and humble, and we're continuing to grow, continue to make this a premier event, I think, anyway, in the Urbana community. So here's some of the, uh, here's just kind of the mission statement of what we're doing and that type of thing. And what I want to kind of just emphasize really is continue to, to the artistic strength of the area, provides opportunity for focus, quality, social interactions, and elevate area, this area as the destination for music. That's really what we're looking to do. So some of the highlights, um, one of the new partnerships that we had was with uh, Neal Street Blues. We're so excited to be working with them. Um, they have been so, um, I guess, just, just welcoming to, to the jazz community at large. And they've, uh, they've done such a great job with, with doing this jazz brunch. The jazz brunch is one of our premier things at the end. And uh, it's a high ticket item. And a lot of people came out for this and it was just such a great thing uh, to have this kind of intimate little um, performance with Sarah McDonald who came out. Sarah McDonald is a fantastic composer, musician, um, artist out of New York. She is from here though. She is from here. And it was one of the reasons why we wanted to bring her out was it, because it was kind of this homecoming for her. And uh, she's done such a great job with her group out in uh, New York called the New York Chill Harmonic. If you get a chance, I highly recommend you check out the work that she is doing um, because it is very uh, different than I think than what a lot of people would consider. It is definitely not just, you know, standards and that type of thing. It's very interesting. And I, we really were excited to work with her. Uh, we're continuing to work with Alan Hall as well. Alan Hall has turned into this great partner that has great um, facilities. Um, they are able to bring in great um, audio and visual recording as well. Um, they do their classes so we can get videos 
professionally done by these students. So we were interacting with the students. And at the same time, a lot of the community really does know about Allen Hall and they were all coming out in droves. This last concert, it was fantastic. I'll show you some pictures here. So again, one of the things that we kicked off with this year and, and uh, it was just such a fun thing was, a, was kind of a New Orleans style kind of walk-in parade thing, but with, a, with the EIU Eastern Illinois University Samba group. And it was so much fun. They walked around the quad, bringing all the people around, and then they led everybody to Cranard Uncorked, which was the, uh, the opening night for us. So again, and we this year celebrating the fifth year for our festival um, and continuing to grow. So some of the, the using uh, for our grants, funding of the Urbana Arts Commission helped fund artist fees. That was a big thing for us, obviously, is to be able to bring in the best artists that we possibly can and, uh, and be able to pay them well. Um, and travel accommodation, all that kind of stuff, and then continuing to promote um, publicly throughout the Champaign-Urbana area. Uh, we, want, we understand the importance of marketing and how that is going to affect us. And I'll show you some of the numbers when we get here in just a second of Justin, how that marketing is I, I don't mean to interrupt you. I don't know if you're going through your presentation or not, or if anybody else is having this problem, but I'm still seeing your first uh, page. I'm not seeing uh, really? you advancing through. Okay. It's on page one. Well, it just jumped to page six. Okay, so now I see six. Now you see six. Okay, I'm sorry. Here, we'll go back. We'll just take a look. You can see some of the. Uh, the there you the, go. The, sorry. The, sorry. I just want to let you know we weren't. No, no, no. Thank you. Us. Thank you for that. It's hard. It's, I can't see on my side. So thank you. I appreciate it. I'll just keep it like this. I'll keep it. I'll keep it on this side. Then you can see see everything through here. Okay. Um, so one of the things that we did new for 2019, um, we had a billboard on Neal Street, uh, which was great, right across from Upper Bout facing northbound. That really gave us a great exposure, um, really was able to continue to get our name out there as well. We did branded stickers. We've done all kinds of different things too. And um, again, we do the jazz brunch, we do the jam session, which is always a big one. And also one of the new events that we did this year was the paper making. Again, this was an event uh, with Stream of Consciousness, my own group, but also working with Will Keeger and uh, the Poet Laureate and, and a bunch of different poets. So what we would do is we would do performances. We had a live artist there working with us, painting, and then we had uh, poets writing what they were hearing and that type of thing. After uh, a while, what they did was they took those poems, went over to the paper making lab, shredded that that information and made new paper, all kinds of recycled paper out of this. It was an absolutely fantastic event and really fun. People got to learn how to do paper making and what's going on, but also too, we got to kind of cross collaborate with poet laureates and some artists within the community as well. So again, so this is how everything started. Um, we've grown and we have, I wanna point out, we have been profitable every single year. So 2015, it started as a two-day festival with 180 visitors. And as you can see, we grew up to 612 visitors as a four-day event. That is a 283% increase, okay, that we have done. And we continued uh, to look at continuing to grow this and becoming, again, one of the premier uh, festivals within the, uh, within the area with your help. So these are some of the partners that we, that we work with, local music stores, obviously. The performance venues continue to expand. And this is something that we really have um, spent a lot of time on. We wanted to do, we wanted to have performance venues that maybe weren't necessarily the norm. Again, the paper making lab. Who, who's gonna do a performance at a paper making lab? Uh, that, <laughs> that definitely was not uh, in the cards for a lot of people but it has shown to be, it was a great event and very interesting and people really loved it. Uh, we definitely obviously work with the high school and universities as well to bring in students that are coming in. They want I want them to see what, what these professionals are doing, but I also want them to interact with these uh, students, or sorry, with the professionals as well. This is a picture, you can see the closing concert at the Urbana Free Library. That was a really fantastic one. That is Jose Guzman's um, Afro-Caribbean project Man, really, mm -hmm. really interesting. Not, mm, not typical, definitely not typical of what you, again, what you would think of like standard jazz. It was really, really fantastic. Jose Guzman is a really, really excellent composer and, uh, and guitarist as well. So looking ahead, this is kind of the things that we're looking at right now. Um, okay, so we are looking at fall of 2020, but I don't know what that looks like at this point in time. I really don't. And 
and we definitely need to kind of uh, make sure that everybody's health and safety is of utmost concern. Uh, that needs to be the number one thing first. And then from there, we're gonna look at, okay, well, what does that mean? What is it, does that mean some different uh, artist opportunities? Does that mean some virtual performances? Does that mean, it can mean a number of different things in maybe, uh, maybe a more outside venue type of thing where, where people are a little bit more separated, whatever. We're looking at, at all those things right now. Uh, but we're gonna continue to highlight and develop local musical talent and elevate Urbana as a jazz festival, uh, jazz and festival destination. So here's some, some performance uh, pictures right here. Uh, Sean Maxwell doing the Urbana um, High School Clinic. That was really a fantastic thing, getting in there and working with the kids. And as you can see on the right there, okay, that Allen Hall, we weren't sure exactly who was gonna be coming out for this. It was packed. I was running around scurrying um, to try to get more chairs because people kept coming in. Uh, it was packed and it was such a great uh, performance. It's a little bit dark and hard to see there, but it was so cool. The vibe was very, very cool in that room. And we're going to continue to work with Alan Hall on that. And so again, you know, we, we can't thank you all enough for helping us fund um, this, this, uh, this jazz festival. This was such a fantastic opportunity. And it also, uh, again, was a uh, a really great opportunity to, to get out there in the community and share some different types of things. Um, this is a great uh, example of some perform a performance. I mean, these guys play in standards, but man, they are just such at the high level. And then you go to the paper making thing, we're doing some weird avant-garde thing. And again, people were, were really uh, enjoying it. So let me just throw that off there. So again, I just really want to thank everybody for, uh, for taking the time to listen to, to me babble on today. <laughs> and, uh, and I hope everybody is staying safe out there and doing the best that they can. And, and we, again, we continue to look at growing and trying to bring great music to the community. Great, congratulations. There was, a question. there was a hand up, Frank, did you have a question? Yes, uh, not a question, just a comment. I participated in the paper making activity <laughs> and uh, oh boy, that was a lot of fun. Thank you, know, like you so that, much, Frank. The challenge was finding it, uh, but yes. I, I was able to connect with a number of people there and to see the whole process of, of doing the listening and writing. And then we shared it and then to have it shredded and create more paper. Yeah. Uh, I loved it. Thank you so much, Frank. Yeah, we, we really felt it was a very unique experience and one that we want to kind of continue to, to grow with. Sure. And there was a, a question from Rachel or a comment. Yeah, I just wanted to um, just echo that and, and say that we were in the, you know, beginnings of planning an exhibit that would have taken some of the poetry and the paper from that particularly that experimental jazz um, portion of the jazz festival and to do an art of jazz exhibit. Um, I'm really looking forward for to do that when the timing is right. Yeah. Um, and it's really wonderful that we have so many opportunities to collaborate outside the grant program and kind of in addition to the things that the grant itself allow. That's something that we really love when, um, when our grantees are able to do that, to, to work with us to further the work in some way. So things like showing that exhibition or future performances, um, I didn't say this when Emily presented, but similarly her participation in Open Scene. It's just so wonderful to see our grantees participate in other aspects of our work and it shows how integrated our art scene is. Um, I don't know I don't know a lot of people in the art scene that don't collaborate with each other. It seems like a thing that we do constantly and it's what makes our community strong. So I just want to commend you for doing that and to, and to the whole committee of CU Jazz Festival for putting on a great event, um, but always also looking for ways to collaborate. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Rachel, is there a further discussion on um, the impact of the uh, COVID-19 on the arts and culture program that you wanted to address? Yeah, I can say a little more. Thanks, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right, everyone. So um, just moving on to our last item on the agenda, that was discussing um, the impact of COVID-19 on the Urbana Arts and Culture Program. Obviously, I said um, a little bit about what has happened thus far. Um, largely, that was giving out resources and support to artists that are in our network as much as we can reiterating um, what's going on, canceling our events, at least for the short term. Um, but now, of course, we're also looking to summer and uh, the impact of 
um, this particular crisis on things like even planning for bigger events that are far down the line, just as some of our grantees were alluding to as well. We're in the same boat. Um, our summer programs are pretty vast. Uh, summer is, at, you know, I worked eight years at the university and summer was like sleepy time over there. <laughs> that is not what summer is for the arts program whatsoever. It ramps up in the summer. I think the summers are busiest time. Um, as you know, last year we added Urbana's downtown get down. Um, we added Urbana Love Summer Movie Nights. Uh, we do outdoor farmer's market concerts typically um, and arts workshops. We do Young Artist Studio on a regular basis in the summer. We have Artists of the Corridor exhibition openings. So for the foreseeable future, we're really trying to look at what do we need in order to do these, what things can be done virtually, what may ne need to be postponed. Um, so the real thing I wanna convey is that we are working with public health we're working um, with our own knowledge and really trying to dig into what are the best practices right now um, with also paying a lot of attention to how this particular pandemic is going to impact us no matter what. So for instance, when we're looking at for, in, for things like business sponsorships, knowing that we can't do that at the same level when businesses are being hit so hard, right? Um, so really thinking about uh, how that looks for our events is, is a real challenge that we're facing right now. And I just wanna make sure that you all know what steps we're taking. So we're working very much with public health. We're taking stock of our events. We're looking at what things can be done uh, virtually. We're trying to get messaging out early about what may need to be postponed or canceled. And then we're also having um, exploratory conversations about what postponement or future dates would look like. So for instance, um, we have already postponed our May downtown get down because we've postponed all of our events for the month of May. Um, and so that has meant too that we're working now to figure out if the downtown get down for example, can extend into the fall. If it extends into the fall, it falls in September on Pygmalion Music Festival weekend, mm -hmm. um, or just, I should say, Pygmalion weekend. So we've also been in communication with Pygmalion about potential collaborations there. We obviously collaborate with Urbana Business Association in August during Sweet Corn Festival, and similar collaborations, I think, can only enhance what we do. But of course, all these plans are somewhat ten, um, tentative, um, not only in their planning, because we don't have any um, set commitments right now, but also because we don't know what the fall will look like. So I just want you to know that um, you, as you're seeing things and you're wanting more information, I want you to all feel free to email me, ask for updates. Obviously, I'll be reporting every month on how this is going to impact our program in the long term. Um, I want to, as much as I can, continue supporting artists, including financially through our program. And so that one thing that we've been able to do is make sure that our um, grantees feel very confident that they can continue their grants, that there's ways in which we'll work with them, both to complete their grant projects, give extensions where needed, but also to revision with them if they need help thinking about how can they um, kind of complete this project with similar impact if the format needs to change in some way. Um, so that's been an ongoing conversation with a lot of the grantees right now. Um, but that goes with a lot of our partners too. And so we're in a lot of meetings. There's a lot of things that as um, kind of going to impact, you know, things like our downtown get down are actually planned with a number of partners. And all of those partners have their own decision making they're doing about their existing programs and what is being suspended or continued. So these things will all impact what we do. And my intention is to continue to report out as you see things that I'm sharing about updates regarding our events. Um, I'm going to do my best to get them out both on our social media pages and website um, and you know, through email, but I also am going to work on our bigger events to get out things like press releases, announcing cancellations. You may have also seen that Visit Champaign County put together a cancellation page. Um, and so that's a place where I'll also announce any postponements or cancellations. But um, anything that's impacting our event, I'm just doing my best to get that word out. So if you see things, please share them and help me get the word out in that way. And that goes especially so for relief programs you're seeing. Um, and of course, any relief programs that we see emerge, I'll be the first to share them when I see them. Thank you so much. Um, are there uh, any other announcements or new business to conclude before we conclude today? Do anybody have anything to, uh, to add? One right. other thing, sorry, that I'll add to that, um, that 
that statement I just gave is that we did get our summer youth employment grant. We got funding and a little bit over $3,000 to support two summer interns. Now, obviously this is also going to be impacted by this grant. So I've reached out to the Illinois Arts Council um, to ask for a little bit more advice about like how, how what the expectations are around summer youth employment. Um, any advice they're giving out regarding that grant. Um, and of course, if there is an extension or so, if we can um, emphasize that they work more beyond the summer or things like that, I'll be sure to arrange that too. Um, but it was another exciting grant that we got recently. <laughs> um, it's just not sure how it will be utilized at this point. Well, it's a mixed blessing, right? Did anyone else have any further comments? Thank you so much for your report, Rachel. Uh, any further comments or new business announcements of any kind? Please stay well. Is um, do we? Uh, I think we can conclude the meeting then, and we are adjourned. Thank you all so much. Good to see you.